What's up, guys? Just finished cardio. Um, got a couple emails, because that's what I do when I'm doing cardio. I'm like on my phone all the time. Um, regarding macronutrient transitions, and I guess kind of how I would establish that journey. Um, this is laid out in full detail in my e-guide, Eat Lean, Not Clean, How to Get Shredded Without Hating Your Life. It came out last month. Um, always check the description box. It's always linked in all my videos, basically. But part three of that e-guide, uh, the journey and how to transition, I kind of go over the order of operations that I would use and recommend. This is not definitely not the only way to go about it, but I find that it's easiest. So in this whole dietary journey, uh, start to finish, not even finish, there's, it's never gonna finish. First off, that's kind of important, is that it never will finish. You're always gonna be kind of fixing and adapting to your lifestyle and things like that. But the best way that I know to go about it and the way that's worked really well with my clients that have started tracking macros are step one, track your old macros. So if you've not already done so, track your typical diet for seven days using my fitness pal or whatever you feel. Um, I now use my fitness pal. I used to do like an old school spreadsheet and then I did an Excel spreadsheet. Anyways, so part one, learn how to track your diet, right? Step number one. A lot of people that watch my channel are past that. Uh, step number two would be to establish new macros for your current body weight. So what I'm trying to get people to do, which a lot of people, I guess it kind of leads them to binging, is they'll say, this is what I eat right now and I'm immediately going to not only are my ratios like real retarded, <laughs> I'm immediately gonna eat less and then play with my ratios, which I think is um, pretty difficult for most people to stick to. So let me elaborate a little bit on that. So if you've never dieted before, most likely you're like every other American, actually probably like 90% of the freaking first world countries where you have a lot more fat than your body needs, a lot more carbohydrate than your body needs, and a lot less protein than your body needs. This is not saying that everybody's like that, but for the most part, that's what tends to happen in a typical American diet. Um, remember that we're not just trying to cut calories and lose all kinds of weight. We're trying to mold ourselves into a leaner body, right? So we're trying to keep muscle mass without gaining tons of fat, um, without losing unwanted weight, you know, shit like that. So the thing that I would recommend is changing your ratios first for your current body weight. So, after you've tracked your macros at your current body weight, then you're gonna use, you can use a few things. In the book, what I go over step by step is calculating a 40-40-20 ratio, which most people are super familiar with. It's really easy, it's been pretty standard for like lots of years, it's a roundabout-ish good starting point for a lot of people. Most people are so far from that. 40-40-20 being 40% 40 of your calories come from protein, 40% come from carbohydrate, and 20% come from fat. Again, most people who have never died are super far from that. Will that exact percentage be optimal once you've gotten used to it and learned how to diet and all that stuff? Probably not. Um, but it's just a good vague starting point, especially again if you've never dieted. Um, in the ebook, also at the end, there's a whole resource page to where if you wanted to figure it out using different calculations, um, way more in depth calculations. There's articles, videos, uh, whatever, that I link you to. Some uh, Lane Norton, some Lyle McDonald, some 3DMJ. Just some, some other things if you wanted to get further into where those numbers come from and other ways to calculate. But again, the simplest, quickest, especially if you've never dieted, 40, 40, 20, and that's what I lay out for you guys. So that would be my step number two. Step number three would be to manipulate your macro intake, not necessarily your caloric intake. So in other words, if you're maintaining weight, uh, but it's not quite the body composition that you want and you're eating like 3,000 calories a day, then keep your 3,000 calories, but just slowly change your ratios. You will see pretty big changes in body composition just by manipulating your macronutrients for your current body weight not going in a big caloric surplus if you're trying to gain mass, not going into a big caloric deficit if you're trying to lose weight. The goal is leanness. So again, if you have a typical American diet, figure it out for your current body weight, and most likely, that transition, you'll find favorable changes in your body composition anyways. If you were trying to tone up as a girl without having to cut any calories, just because you're changing, you're probably increasing protein, decreasing fat and carb, 
you'll see some things happen that you didn't expect. Well, I'm telling you to expect them, but you'll tend to see things happen in a good way with resistance training without ever having to cut calories. So this whole transitional step is the most important and it's gonna take probably a really freaking long time, which is good, which is okay. Especially if you're not competing, all you have is time. So chill out, be patient. And um, here's some ways that I recommend making the change so that you don't like freak your body out, cause binges, ruin your metabolism, things like that. These are by no means necessary. There's other ways to do it. If you have a prep coach, if you, whatever your experience, you know, whatever. But again, if this is a, a big transition for you, the first thing I would say uh, as far as transitional guidelines would be don't mess with anything for any shorter amount of time than two weeks. So you got the old macros, you got your goal macros, you're gonna start to make your first creep, okay? You make that creep, wait two weeks. If you're starting to see, if your goal is to lose weight and you've lost a little bit of weight, just keep going with it, keep going with it. If it's five weeks later till you hit a plateau, then maybe you next, make your next creep. But definitely don't start changing every week, every five days or whatever, if it's all working. Again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So if you made, if you're trying to gain weight, you made an upward creep and you're a male who's super new to training and you're gaining you know, a quarter pound to a half a pound a week, ride that out till you stop gaining. Same with weight loss, ride it out till you stop losing. So if that means you responded for six weeks straight, great. Shit, that even happened to me in contest prep. We did like eight weeks while, ever, while I was still losing weight but never touched the macros. So don't change just for the sake of changing because you're trying to hurry it up. If it's working, let it keep working. Now, a 25 gram food rule. So what I mean by that is to not, when I'm talking about those creeps, keep them small. Never, I would say no more than 10 grams of carb in either direction, 10 grams of protein or five grams of fat. So if your first step from your old macros to your new macros requires you to increase protein, decrease carbs and fat, go up 10 grams of the protein, go down 10 grams of the carb, and go down five grams of the fat. So you're only ever making a change of about 125 calories per shift. And again, you just ride that out till it stops working, two weeks or more. And step number four would be to eat as much as you possibly can. So when you're happy with your current body weight, strength levels, and personal abilities to maintain a normal existence, then carb the hell out of it for lots of reasons. <laughs> and what's the purpose of this? Well, carbs are most directly related to metabolism. So it's going to increase your energy levels and give you more glycogen to use for your workouts, all that good stuff. Also, you wanna have as much food as possible so that if you ever did wanna cut, say you have a wedding coming up, you went on a weekend binge, you, do, you know, whatever. When you have more to take away from, it's gonna make that cut a little less uncomfortable. And last but not least, because carbs are freaking delicious. Again, not to say that the 40-40-20 ratio is exactly perfect. Not to say that this is the only way that you have to do things, but I figured this was like the easiest, most actionable way to I guess broadly state it in a quick and easy guide for everybody. So again, there's lots of other stuff in the book, but that's how I kind of want to go about the four basic steps on how I would transition. So figure out your diet, figure out the new one, play with ratios first, then you can go with surplus or deficit and all that stuff. And when you do make those changes upward or downward, make sure that you're giving yourself at least two weeks per change you're not changing just because you're waiting till you actually hit stopping points. And when you do make the changes, don't make them in any bigger increments than like 25 grams of food at a time. 10 protein, 10 carb, or five fat in any direction. Um, and once you've gotten happy with where you are, your strength and the way you look and all that stuff, then crank up the food as much as you can to keep that metabolism healthy and have more to cut from whenever you want to. And as always, check the description box. It'll be the first link below if you wanna check out Eat Lean, Not Clean, How to Get Shredded Without Hating Your Life. Quick and easy macro guide, flexible dieting, all that stuff. Um, tons of resources at the end of it, like I said, to help further explain all the things that I've been talking about. So, click the link below. Have a great day. I hope that helped. Let me know if you have any other questions. Talk to you soon.